Hi, welcome back. This week I'd like you to watch a video called Why Privacy Matters. It's a presentation given by Alessandro Acquisti. Now Acquisti is a very smart college professor who's been studying this subject of online privacy for some time now. He teaches at Carnegie Mellon University. He's heavily involved in the research centers at that school, and they're watching very closely what's happening with online privacy and some of the bigger social media websites. Now, Quisty is talking about the same subject that Jennifer Goldbeck talked about in last week's essay, which is all about how we as consumers are providing enormous amounts of personal information that corporations and advertisers are quietly collecting and organizing and analyzing for their own benefit. Now, what concerns people like Jennifer Goldbeck and Alessandro Acquisti is that most of us are not really aware of just how much information we're sharing. And in many cases, the companies that collect this information from us are not being entirely upfront and honest about what they plan to do with that information once they get it. The type of companies that are most eager right now to get a hold of that information are the advertising and marketing firms. Now, advertisers have known from the beginning of time that mass advertising is okay, but it doesn't come anywhere close to being as effective as targeted advertising, where the ad is only shown to people who have an interest in a particular type of product or even a specific type of lifestyle. So how do advertisers find out these things from us? Well, over the last 50 years, they've been able to make some fairly good educated guesses about what kinds of people would be most likely to buy a certain product. But over time, the world has become so saturated with new companies and new products that the old way of advertising is losing its effectiveness. So what marketers are looking for now is a way to make their advertising even more targeted. And to make that happen, they need to know more information about us as individuals. Now, you might hear the speaker in this video mention the movie Minority Report with Tom Cruise. And the reason he brings up this futuristic movie is that there's a scene where the main character, John Anderton, is walking through a retail store and the product signs and advertisements are all being custom generated for him. I've included a link below where you can watch this short clip on YouTube. What you'll see is that the ads are talking to him. They're even using his name. All because the store has cameras set up to zoom in on a customer and then use facial recognition to get that person's name, their age, their sex, all their personal preferences. Now, if you think this is just good science fiction, then you should probably think again. The technology that makes facial recognition possible is already here. And who owns the largest collection of faces that have ever been amassed in the history of our planet? Facebook, of course. And obviously, that's why the company is valued at more than $67 billion. So how many faces does Facebook have? Well, at last count, it was 1.19 billion users logging in every month. Now, that's a really large number that's almost impossible to visualize. But let's take a look at just the population of the United States, which is 313 million you'd have to multiply that four times to come close to the number of users on Facebook. If we look at the entire population of our planet, we're looking at a little over 7 billion. So the number of users on Facebook is not that small of a fraction of the total number of people who live on this planet. And that's why people like Acquisti and Goldbeck are more than a little concerned about privacy issues when it comes to online media and these social media websites. Now, the essay I want you to read for this week is not by Equisti, but rather by someone who wrote a response to the Equisti TED Talk video. I think it happened to be a, a good example of a, of a short essay, and I think it will uh, give you some ideas about how you might be able to structure your own essay for your final project. As you read the essay, think about what type of theme the writer is using. Remember that you can use the same themes you used in writing paragraphs to write an entire essay. For example, the narration theme, where you tell a story. Or how about a process theme, where you show or tell the reader how to do something. Or how about an illustration theme, where you're giving examples to support a main point. An argument theme, where your job is to persuade the reader to see your point of view. So when you look at the introduction in the essay, uh, see if you can identify which type of theme the writer is using. 
Is it a narration theme? Is it a process theme? Is it an illustration theme? Is it an argument? Also take note that the last sentence of the introduction paragraph is the thesis of that person's essay. Also, when you read the introduction, try to identify which type of intro the uh, writer is using. For example, did the author use a general statement? Did the author include a quote? Did the author include a question? Did the author state a problem? Also take a close look at the conclusion in this essay and see if you can identify the type of conclusion this writer used. For example, is this a conclusion that restates the thesis of the essay? Or is it a conclusion that includes a call to action? Does it use the technique of framing where it repeats something from the introduction just to tie the whole essay together? Now about the title, you'll notice that the essay I had you read doesn't have a title. And I think this will give you a good opportunity to maybe practice coming up with some ideas of your own. So let's take a look at the introduction and see if maybe we can come up with a couple ideas that might work for a really nice title. To some extent, there's a false premise that has been sold to everyone that goes something like this. If you want to have convenience, you're going to have to sacrifice the privacy of your soul. When we ask why, the most common answer returned back to us is that it's necessary for consumers to surrender a little bit of privacy so that companies can better target us with ads and services. The belief that we must pay for convenience by giving up privacy is not only a wrong assumption, but a dangerous assumption. So there's the introduction. Now, what might be a possible title for this kind of an essay? How about the price of privacy? Or how about surrendering our privacy to ads? Or online privacy, the winners and losers? How about convenience versus privacy? These are all fairly good ideas for titles that are short, that reflect the thesis of the essay, and have a little bit of an interesting spin. Now that you've completed all three essay worksheets, you should have all the pieces needed to put together a complete essay. So if you haven't done so already, now would be a good time to go to a word processing program like Microsoft Word and put all of your work into one document. This is important because I want you to spend the next couple of weeks making revisions and editing this one document. Make sure that you include a title, an introduction, and at least four paragraphs to form the body of your essay. And don't forget, I want you to add a conclusion. Now, if this were a class held on campus, we would probably spend this week doing what's called a workshop. This is where you would show your essay to other students to get their feedback and suggestions. What I'm going to do instead with this online course is have you critique your own work. And to help you do that, I've created an essay review worksheet that you can use to go through your essay and make sure you've covered the most important points that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. So put yourself in the shoes of an imaginary classmate and read through your essay, looking for things that maybe you've left out or maybe something that could be improved. Of course, I'll be sending you my own comments over the next couple of days about your chosen title, introduction, and conclusion, so be watching your MCC email for those suggestions from me. Then, after you've made the necessary revisions based on your own notes and the comments that I've sent, I want you to submit that document to me by next Tuesday. We'll call this your first draft. In next week's module, which is module 15, I'll have you continue revising your essay using the final comments I provide you about your first draft. Now the following week will be finals week. For this course, all you need to do is send me the final draft of your essay, and that will be due on Thursday, May 8th. I'll have more details about submitting your final essay in next week's module. So that's it for this week. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be looking forward to seeing the first draft of your essay next week. Have a good week.